Before you can make this, you've got to start with this. Coming right up on Weekend at the Cottage. Welcome to Weekend at the Cottage. I'm Nick Manoilovich. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a photograph of a loaf of sourdough bread, much like this one, yet it was my first ever sourdough bread. We posted the photograph on our social media platform and lots of questions immediately started coming in. How did you make it? What's the recipe? Did you make your own starter? I spoke to my business partner, Carol. We decided we're gonna do a series, two parts. First of all, I'm gonna show you how to make an easy sourdough starter and then the next video you'll see at Weekend at the Cottage is going to be me showing you how to make a delicious homemade sourdough bread. Now before I walk through the steps on how to make a starter let me just mention this full story and photographs and expert tips are available on our dedicated website weekendatthecottage.com. When you're there please subscribe to it and tell your friends we're doing a starter and sourdough series. Number two you're probably going to want to reference this video plus look for the sourdough video on our dedicated YouTube channel. Why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel and then finally we really want to see your first adventure with sourdough bread. So take photographs of everything you're making, post them on your favorite social media platforms like Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Just make sure you use hashtag weekend at the cottage so Carol and I can see all of your wonderful work. Okay, are you ready to make a sourdough starter? Don't be worried, it's really easy and I know you're gonna have great success with this. This starter recipe will be a record breaker. It only has two ingredients, flour and water, but let me give you a couple of tips about each. Let me just say I've been down the rabbit hole of starters over the past couple of weeks and have found that using organic flours really make a difference. In this post, I'll show you how to make a starter using an organic all-purpose flour, but feel free to experiment with rye flour, whole wheat, or combinations of each. Second ingredient is water, and because I'm drawing water from the lake, I can't drink it. I never cook with it. Instead, I have a big jug in the kitchen. In that jug is distilled water at room temperature. Next thing that's important to this recipe, let me put up a photograph of the tools you're gonna need. Nothing too complicated. You'll see me use them now as I assemble our starter. The one thing you might wanna purchase is a kitchen scale. Um, I do the flour in this recipe by weight, so this will come in handy. We have our tools, we have our ingredients. Let's get started. I'm gonna walk you through this seven day process. You're gonna do just fine. And at the end of this, you're gonna have a sourdough starter and before you know Know it, you'll be making bread just like I did. To begin the process, day one, take your kitchen scale. You're going to measure out four ounces of your organic all-purpose flour. You're also going to need half a cup of that room temperature distilled water. Then we'd like you to take a 500 milliliter storage jar, do a little collar of parchment paper. This helps when you add the flour, it doesn't splish everywhere. Add your water. Next, you're going to want to take a dinner knife and then just stir vigorously to bring those two ingredients together. I think it's important to look down in the jar and get a sense of the consistency of this. We're aerating this mixture, but you also get a sense, hey, this is kind of almost a spongy in texture, which is the goal. Next, you're gonna take a silicone spatula and just run it on the inside to make sure none of the starter is up on the inside of the jar. Next, we're gonna add a watermark in the form of an elastic band on the outside, and this is gonna give you a sense of how much your starter grows every day. Next, you need to add a porous cover. You can use a piece of linen, a dishcloth. I love using these beeswax wraps. Add it to the top, pull it down, add an elastic band. Final thing is to place your starter in a warm location. Uh, my room is running at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius. Put your starter in that location, leave it undisturbed for 24 hours. Now the adventure continues on day two. You're gonna bring your starter to the work surface, take the cap off, and I need you to look down into it. Do you see any bubbles? That's a sure sign your starter is working. Uh, and usually you will see them on day two or day three. Your step for day two, we're taking a second storage jar. I'm gonna take two heaping tablespoons of the starter, add it into the clean jar, and then add your parchment paper, flour, and water, stir vigorously, cover, and place it back into that warm location. Mm -hmm. 
Day three is pretty exciting. Bring your starter to the work surface, take the cap off, look down, and you've probably seen some serious change. It's probably doubled in size, it's gone way above that water mark. It's very foamy, very spongy, it's got a lot of bubbles. And you can see when I take a spoon and just pull it up, it really has a lot of activity. Like the classic Mel Brooks Young Frankenstein movie, scream at the top of your lungs, it's alive! Truly it is, and this experiment is working. Same procedure for day three, four, five, and six. We're gonna take two tablespoons, transfer to a clean jar. We then add our collar, add the quantity of flour and water, stir vigorously. Make sure you incorporate that spongy starter with the new ingredients every time you feed it. Stir vigorously, cap goes on, and back to that warm location. With the arrival of day seven, trust me, I know the feeling you are chomping at the make your own sourdough bread bit. Two options, you can take some of that starter and proceed and make a really delicious sourdough bread recipe, or if you're not ready to make your bread yet, you need to take a little bit of your starter into a clean jar, feed it, place on a lid, a ring, and then place it into your fridge until you're ready to go. Okay, the last step is really special and this is completely up to you. You've gotta give your sourdough starter a name. Like I mentioned, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole. I ended up with three starters. So, for my 100% whole wheat, it's Pierpont. And how about my half and half, half whole wheat, half all purpose, I'd like you to meet Hamish. And then finally, my beauty, the starter that started it all, made with 100% organic, all purpose, the very beautiful, robust, and hardworking Vivian. I know you're gonna love this process, will you ever? Just remember, as soon as you've got your starter, you're gonna be able to make this, and I bet yours will be as beautiful, if not more beautiful, than mine. You'll see as soon as you get started. Enjoy.